As they talked, a dog lying there lifted head and pricked his ears. This was Argos, whom Odysseus had bred but never worked, because he left for Ilium too soon. On a time the young fellows used to take him out to course the wild goats, the deer, the hares, but now he lay derelict and masterless on the dung heap before the gates, on the deep bed of mule droppings and cow dung which collected there, till the serfs of Odysseus had time to carry it off for manuring his broad acres. So lay Argos the hound, all shivering with dog ticks. Yet the instant Odysseus approached, the beast knew him. He thumped his tail and drooped his ears forward, but lacked power to drag himself ever so little towards his master. However, Odysseus saw him out of the corner of his eye, and brushed away a tear which he covered by quickly saying to Eumaeus in an offhand way, Strange, that they let such a hound lie on the dunghill. What a beauty to look at! Though, of course, I cannot tell if he has speed to match, or is merely one of those show-dogs men prize for their points. Eumaeus answered, That is the hound of a man who died far from home. If only he could recover the fire and life that were his when Odysseus left for Troy, how your eyes would open at seeing such speed and power. Put him on the trail, and no quarry ever escaped him, not even in the densest thickets, so keen he was of scent. Now he has fallen low, his master having perished abroad, and the heartless women caring for him not at all. Slaves, when their master's control is loosed, do not even wish to work well. Ah, the day a man's enslaved, Zeus robs him of half his virtue. With this word he plunged into the house, going straight along the hall amidst the suitors. But Argos the dog went down into the blackness of death the moment he saw Odysseus again, after twenty years. <laughs>